Right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a Toyota Prius that I've just bought for £3,000. Now, I'm a little bit worried about this one. I bought it as part of a package of cars from a local main dealer. As always, there are cars within that package that I don't really want, but I have to take them. The reason I'm a little bit worried this time isn't the fact that it's a Prius, because I actually quite like them. No, it's the fact that this one's done nearly 200,000 miles, so I'm guessing it's a taxi, or has been used as a taxi. I've had loads of cars over the years that have done high mileage, and usually by the time they get to 200k, they're finished. This could be more of a problem with something like a Prius, because at 200,000 miles, God knows what the battery's like. I'm thinking if it's been used as a taxi, and I'm pretty sure that it has, then it might have been maintained well. You never really know with taxis. Sometimes they've been abused from dawn until dusk, and then other times they've been looked after really well, like the person's livelihood depends on it. And the other thing is, because it's £3,000, it's too expensive to scrap. I can't spend £3,000 on it and then take £300 in scrap. With the cheaper cars that I buy or take in parts exchange, then it doesn't really matter, but at three grand it does. So I'm desperately hoping it's not a lemon. My plan is, if it's alright of course, take it to the workshop, do an oil change, give it an MOT, make sure it's all safe and working properly, and then sell it. Now obviously because it's high mileage it'll be sold as is, but I'm pretty sure there'll be somebody out there that does, I don't know, taxiing or Uber Eats or that kind of thing that might want a cheap Prius. When I had a quick look on Autotrader this morning, the cheapest Prius I could see was four and a half grand. So at three grand, if I could spend a couple hundred pounds on it, there's a healthy profit margin. Anyway, let's go and have a look. Right, well, we're here, and straight away, I've had a bit of a result. You see, I thought, well, I was told it was a 2009 car, which it is, so I assumed it was a Mark II. It's actually a Mark III. That's a late 2009. You see, 2009 was that crossover year where they did both the new and the old. So, that is a Mark III Prius, which is pretty good news. That means it's got a 1.8 litre four-cylinder engine, not the 1.5. By the way, it looks a little bit scruffy. Stone chips on the bonnet, cloudy headlamps. Actually, it's only got one cloudy headlamp, not both sides. It's had a bit of a bump. But, interestingly, it doesn't look like it's been a taxi. There are some telltale signs when a car's been a taxi. Like, for example, if it's got holes in the front bumper, I'll, I'll show you this when we walk around it, but straight away I would expect that to have a square front plate and then space to the right hand side or left where it's had its taxi plate. And I can't see that, so that's good news. In fact, right, I was going to do a vehicle history check anyway, but this will tell us whether it's been a taxi or not. So I'm going to go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg, which is Echo Juliet 59 Essex car, Kilo Kilo Bravo, and then we'll check it. Now I've done a deal with Car Vertical, so you'll get 10% off each and every check that you do. All you need to do is click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK and you'll get a 10% discount. Right, it's currently checking databases in dozens of countries here. This will tell us whether it's ever been stolen, been involved in any accidents, has outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. So it's really important that you do one of these. Crucially, this will tell us whether it's been used as a taxi or not. It does all these sorts of checks. With nearly 200,000 miles on the clock, I would assume it has been, but that front bumper suggests otherwise. Maybe they've just used it as a work car and they've done a lot of miles. Right, and the report's back. So there's no mileage fraud, so the mileage is genuine. It's never been stolen. Never been involved in any recorded accidents. There's no outstanding finance on it. So that's all good. Let's go down to the bit where it tells if it's been used as a taxi or not. Right, you need to go down to the bit where it says vehicle usage and ownership restrictions. So, has it been a handicapped vehicle? No. Driving school car? No. Police vehicle? No. Used as public transport or rental car? No. Used as a taxi? No records found. Right, well that has just improved things slightly. I mean, it's still done 200,000 miles, but it hasn't been used as a taxi, which always looks better. So let's see if there's any MOT on it then. It's always, every single recent MOT has had advisory items, which isn't good. It had its last MOT test done, Ah, right, so it failed on a load of stuff first, which is obviously being done, and then it's passed with an advisory item being near side rear trial seat fitted, not allowing full inspection of belt. That screams of a main dealer MOT, or somebody like Halfords or QuickFit. They're always really very strict on things like that. So it's passed in November last year, right, so it's got a short MOT that expires next month. Okay, right, so I'd have to service an MOT it. And the last MOT mileage, it had done 189,000 miles at its last MOT. And it's done around 10,000 miles a year. 15,000, 17,000. 
actually when you consider its age bear in mind it's a 2009 so that's 13 years old let's do the math then shall we 200,000 miles divided by 13 years so it's 15,000 miles a year it isn't particularly high is it ah it's never had a change of owner either so one owner car this one owner one owner rider right let's go and walk around it then see how bad it is bad how bad okay so well the good thing is we've got both keys that one doesn't work but that one does okay good right then we have got now Priuses always have these they look like alloys but they're not so there's a steel wheel underneath which always seems to corrode and this one's no exception and then they have a trim on top we've got a bridgestone at the back which is good we've we got a date on that one 2019 okay we've got some damage there which has popped the back bumper out not the end of the world fairly straight down the panels there no damage to the sill there's a bit of a ding there not too bad though over on the front we've got a what brand is that arrow speed mm, never heard of it how old is that then that is a sorry for this riveting viewing guys I'm trying to find the date right 2020 and there's plenty of tread on that actually again the steel wheel has corroded massively that's not bad is it that's got a crack in it a little indicator so it's like light uh, water in And we've got, if you can see, one new looking headlamp and one very cloudy looking one. So that's been replaced. So it must have had a bit of a nudge in this end. Which would make sense because there's some damage down here, like an, inspe like an inspector here. Some damage down here, which possibly could have damaged that. The impact might have lifted that and cracked the lens. So they've replaced it. Now what we're looking for here to see if it's been used as a taxi. We've got the Halford plates here. You would have thought there'd have been some holes on the bumper here and there aren't any. Because in the UK you get a separate taxi plate in addition to the vehicle reg plate, so there would be some mounting points there and there aren't any. So that is a result then it hasn't been used as a cab. Lots of stone chips there in keeping with a car of that sort of mileage. We've got another arrow speed with yeah, five or six mil of tread. Ah right, we've got a bit of damage down this side on the sill there, to see the damage there and the lower part of the door. But it's not too bad and I think for a car of this age and mileage that could just be touched in just to take your eye off it. The indicator of the lens there is pretty good. It's a bit filthy, it's covered in cobwebs and stuff. No damage there to the roof. Ah right, we're missing a wheel trim. So that's what it looks like without a wheel trim and it looks like it's been recovered off a shipwreck. It's completely corroded. And um, we've got an odd tire though, it's a Delinte. That's a pity. Thought we were gonna have matching tires on each axle. These wheels really want dipping, stripping, and then powder coating. But on a car like this, I just don't have the margin to do that sort of repair. That BM sounded good, didn't it? We've got a dent here. Not too bad though, is it really? Ah, it's a T3. You know what, as I, walked, as I was walking around it, I spotted the leather and assumed it was a T-Spirit. They do with Toyota, it's quite easy to work out the, the trim level or the spec. So it's a T3, T4 or T-Spirit is the all singing, all dancing. It's come from Bishop Stortford. Not far from the airport, I don't think that. Right, so let's have a look inside then. See if we've been left any treasures in the boot. We always have this light interior which always looks a bit grubby. Some spillages here as well. Apart from a quick clean though, there's nothing there too, too bad. Can't get in that, but that piece of trim back on. Leave that. Parcel shelf. It's very grubby. Looks like it's been parked under a tree. Now 
Ah, uh, I've just realised, right. So, the front plate was supplied by Halfords. This back plate is the original plate, I think. So it has had a whack on the front. Obviously not bad enough to be recorded against it. Not bad enough to damage that headlamp, but bad enough to need a new near side headlamp. Okay, right. So we've got some corrosion here on the tread there. I wonder what sort of spec this is then, because it's a T3. It's quite grubby, they've had kiddie seats there. But it's got leather. Didn't realise leather was an option on a T3. It smells quite clean though, got the original mats. We've got very, very dark privacy glass there. Mm. A little bit of a rip there on the seat, I think. Lumbar support, slightly damaged seat there, as you'd expect with a 200,000 mile car. And no nav or reverse camera because it's a T3. It is very grubby, this. Very grubby. What on earth is that? I thought it was a pair of socks. Like a mill nuts. Let's have a look under the bonnet then. This has never been cleaned, I don't think, ever. Look at the cobwebs there. That's something you'd see in a haunted house. Coolant looks fresh. Hmm, right. Check the old dipstick. Hmm, that looks pretty clean, actually. This has had a recent service. And now the sun's out, look at that. Somewhere in the distance there, I can hear a Jaguar V8. So, it's been years since I've been in one of these. As a driver, I've been in lots as a passenger. Let's start it up. We've got BBC Radio 2. wrong one. Japanese cars, I always press the wrong button to turn it off. It was on the opposite side. So we've done 191,000 miles, 191,786. Quarter tank of fuel, electric mirrors. It's very mossy this. And all the rubber seals, you can see the moss. Windows work. You know what, there's still plenty of life in this. You can just tell. Needs a bit of a clean, but not too bad. Handbrake is a foot brake, isn't it? That's fine. And it engages gear. Right, that is all good. Even the air conditioning works. Right, how do I turn it down? There we go. Let's have a look at this service history then. So, all the previous MOTs. They've done about 15,000 miles a year. That's all good. Service and brakes there in 2016, 400 pounds. Service at Toyota there at 2021. Okay, right. But this has got full Toyota history you now. This is to certify that your Toyota has successfully passed its annual hybrid check. That was August 21 at RRG Huddersfield. Well, that's good going, isn't it? That's very good. What else have we got? Wow, 4,400 pound bill here for suspension work. Oh, it's had a new hybrid battery as well then. So at 178, it had a new hybrid battery. Under warranty by the looks of it. Under warranty. Because there's no bill. I know the previous owner of this has spent a lot of money on this on bills and repairs, but it just goes to show, doesn't it? Toyota and Lexus do a 10 year warranty, part of their relaxed warranty. So if you service it with them, 
they'll look after it for 10 years. Bear in mind this is also zero road tax. You could really run this on a shoestring, couldn't you? It'll do 50 miles per gallon wherever you go. We've got EV mode, which we're in right now. Right, well, let's take it for a drive. I love the silence of a hybrid. I always thought the Prius steering wheel was weird. They've shaped it like Hey Arnold's head. That's nice and quiet. We're currently running on battery power alone. The air conditioning works, which is nice. Very rare to find a parts exchange for a main dealer with functioning air conditioning. And we're still on battery power. It drives okay. Excessive speed, so we're now out of EV mode. I think it works till you get to something like 25 miles an hour. Well, straight away, this drives very well. It's got the CVT gearbox, which when you put your foot down, makes a horrible noise, but it does the job. To say this has done 191,000 miles, I'm quite impressed. There's the odd creak or rattle, but I think you could live with it. And for 3,000 pounds, what's this gonna cost you? Zero to tax, 50 miles per gallon, cheap insurance. You could just run this for the next three years and then scrap it. The Toyota Prius is always hated by car lovers, but I don't see why. I really rate them. I actually had one myself. As a mode of transport, you can't beat them. There's loads of legroom in the back, They're quite comfortable, spacious, practical, reliable. You know when you're driving around and you look to see what other people are driving? Most people aren't interested in cars, are they? So they drive something like that silver Qashqai or that grey Hyundai, whatever it is, a state car. Most people don't care. So they should just buy something like this. It would save them a fortune. As I put my foot down there, we've got a bit, I don't know whether you can hear that or not, we've got a bit of a wheel bearing noise. Is it coming from the, I think from the rear. So I think I should run it to my mechanics next, get them to service it, MOT it, check it over, sort that wheel bearing noise out. Then I'll take it for a good old clean. And I think I've got a car here that should be able to make a thousand pounds on. Especially now I know that it's the Mark III Prius with full Toyota history, one owner. This would do a taxi driver or whatever for another couple of years. You know, if I had to, I'd run around in something like this. It really wouldn't bother me. It is just a tool to do a job and it does that job really well. I was chatting to somebody recently and they said, oh, I don't know why people buy hybrids. They seem to be the worst of both worlds. Well, I disagree. I think they're the best of both worlds. Do you get really good fuel economy? There's zero range anxiety because the minute it runs dry, you just top it up. No charging it for eight hours or any of that nonsense. And it's still fairly clean. It's not a dirty diesel that's polluting the planet. Well, I'm quite impressed with that. I think that will conclude my test drive for today. I need to have a look on eBay and see if I can find a wheel trim for it, don't I? You know when you've done this job for as long as I have and you're in and out of hundreds of different cars every week, you can tell a good one from a bad one. And I think this is a pretty good one. Of course, my mechanic will be the judge of that, but I'm pretty sure this will sail through an MOT with minimal work required. Well, I think I might have some profit for once. Let me catch up with you in a couple of days time and I will have the, hopefully, good news, not the bad news, I've had enough of that. So, I'll see you then. Well guys, she's back. Do you remember how I said that I thought this was a nice one, so it would only need an oil change and an MOT and then it'd be ready for sale? Well, it wasn't quite that straightforward. The first thing I did was take it down to my mechanics, where it had an oil change and an MOT and a wheel bearing. Now they've done the wheel bearing and that hum has gone at speed, so that's cured, so that's good news. But they also found that it needed two new tires and new brake discs and pads. It's also been wax oiled underneath because I know as Japanese cars age, they can get a little bit ripe under there. So it's had that done. Now my total bill there was 538 pounds, 59 pence. From there, I took it to my automatic gearbox center and it's had a gearbox service. So it's had new fluid and a new filter. That only cost me 102 pounds. Then I took it for a full detail clean because it was quite grubby and it's cleaned up really well. It's still got a few areas where the body works a bit poor, but I'm not gonna bother getting that done. For a car of this mileage, I think it'd be a waste of money. It's not too bad. While it was having its detail clean, I also asked them to buff the headlamp because one was off color. So that's been done and it looks brand new. It genuinely now looks as good as the one which has been replaced. 
That's the good thing with Japanese headlamps. No one's ever said that before, have they? That's the good thing with Japanese headlamps. They will take a good buff in. The bill there was £70. In addition to that, I ordered a brand new Toyota wheel trim. That was £45, because you remember, one was missing. So I put that on, and it looks as good as new. The steel wheels underneath really needed to be stripped back and then powder coated again. But for a car of this price, it just isn't worth doing. And 80% of the wheels covered up by that trim anyway, so it's not too bad. For any of you watching who are good at maths, you've probably worked out my total already. But for those of you who aren't, I shall tell you anyway. My grand total, are you ready? Drum roll please. 755 pounds, 58 pence. If you add that to the 3,000 pounds that I paid for this car, the grand total is 3,755 and 58 pence. I've currently got this car advertised on Autotrader at 4995, and Autotrader being the experts that they are, tell me it's a good price. So there's still some profit left in it. I'm hoping I can get 4750 for it, in which case it's a clean thousand pound profit. So we'll see if the phone rings, time will tell. Forget the theoretical invisible profit for now, I'm actually quite pleased I've kept this car going a little bit longer. This should be good now for another 80 or 100,000 miles. To say this has done 191,000 miles, it drives really well. After the stressful week I've had of things going wrong and things breaking and dealing with solicitors and all that sort of stuff, part of me just wants to drive something like this. Forget wanting better and better and better all the time and all the stresses that that brings. Part of me wants to just move to some remote Caribbean island somewhere and just chill out. Buy a modest villa on the water, nothing too fancy, but it must have its own pool and its own jetty so I can have a speedboat. Then I just spend the days there pottering around, go for a bit of breakfast, go for a coffee, maybe play nine holes. Can you imagine? That'd be heaven, wouldn't it? Anyway, for now, back to reality. I'm trying to make a thousand pounds profit here from a 191,000 mile Toyota Prius. So I think that's about it. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. I've also set up a new property channel, High Peak Properties. So check that out. And yeah, I think that's about it. So cheers guys, see you next time.